Hi everyone, and welcome back to Scale Studio. Today, after quite a long break, I'm back at it, painting the final details like the hatches, tools, and rubber on the road wheels. So, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to start by painting the inside of the hatches with the Tiger's base coat, in this case, Vallejo Desert Sand. This is how the Germans did it in World War II, and it definitely makes sense for camouflaging reasons. Now, because I lost the driver's hatch, I decided to buy a 3D file in 1 16th of the component. After some scaling tests, I 3D printed it on my anti-cubic photon. After I cleaned up the support attachments, I assembled it with black superglue and textured it with Tamiya putty. I then finished spray painting some small details to match the various colors of the tank. I'm not sure what the pad is made out of, but since it was most likely colored leather, I went for a worn leather look. I started by painting it Vallejo Base Gray. I also painted the outer seal on the hatch, as this area would have been heavily damaged by water and repeated slamming. After that, I'm going to lightly dry brush the pad with Vallejo Dark Earth, and then apply some chips or stains, take your pick, with the same color.
I'm going to paint the periscopes gloss black, mainly since I didn't have a flat black at the time. Don't judge me. On a small side note, I'm using AK Acrylic Drying Retarder for all of my brush painting, since it seriously improves coverage, properties, and gives you more time to clean out your brush. This is a product that I think everybody should have, and no, this is not a paid promotion. Now I'm going to make the glass effects for the periscope lenses. First, I'm going to thin down some clear Elmer's PVA with tap water, base coat the lens Vallejo Air Dark Sea Green, and carefully apply the thinned PVA to the lens. This can also be done with Tamiya Clear, but I find that the Elmer's glue is easier to use and dries slightly glossier. After the periscopes are done, I'll apply a wash I mixed from about equal parts burnt umber and lamp black oil paints, as well as the customary enormous amount of thinner. Once it dries, I'll clean up the excess with mineral spirits. Whoa. Now I'm going to sponge chip the inside of the hatches with a slightly lighter base coat color. Then I'll use a thinned down base gray color. It of course has drying retarder in it. I'm using the Wargamer Army Painter brush. After that, I'll rub every edge with this graphite stick. A pencil will work just as well, so if you don't have a sticks of graphite around, just use a normal pencil. I'll then add some final chipping to the leather pad on the commander's hatch with Vallejo German Black Brown. Now I can start on the tools. I'll base coat the wood with desert sand and the metal with Vallejo Air Dark Sea Grey.
I'll then paint the compressed paper handles on the bolt cutters with Vallejo Light Rust and the plastic end pieces with Vallejo Chocolate Brown. Sliding a piece of paper under the tow cable while painting it is a super helpful technique as it'll catch many mistakes you might make. Big thank you to Panzermeister36 for demonstrating it in one of his videos. Now I'm going to apply small dots of raw sienna and burnt umber oil paints to the handles of the tools and blend them with mineral spirits. This will add some interesting texture that simulates wood grain. After that, I'll dry brush the metal parts with light gray. Now that I finally have all the parts, I can assemble the muzzle brake with super glue. I use dispenser needles as I get a lot of control and they are super cheap. I'll then airbrush it with desert sand. I'm then going to chip up the end of the barrel, which replicates heat distressing. After that, I'll use some black oil paint for a soot effect like I did on the exhausts in a previous video. Now I'm going to start super gluing on the details that we finished.
I did have to touch up the hinge here with ivory again because I had to shave it down for the 3D printed part. After those are glued on, I need to paint the bow machine gun and the coaxial machine gun with black. I can't remember if it was glossy black or flat black, although in the big scheme of things I don't think it really matters since they're such a small detail. Um, after I was done painting them, I did polish them with graphite. After that, I'll dry brush the idler wheel and drive sprocket with silver to simulate the raw metal exposed by the track movement. And with that, we're done. Sorry this video took forever to release, but hopefully we'll be back on track next week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.